here at the Nature Institute for this week eight uh, of Nature's Not Cancel, our Facebook Live video. Unfortunately, this is our last and final week of our eight week Nature's Not Cancel program. So we're at the Nature Institute, specifically at the Kemp and Cora Hutchinson Bird Sanctuary, here with Education Director Ramona Pushcott and Educator Emily Ailey. Ailey. Sorry, <laughs> Emily Ailey. I knew I was going to get one of them. So they are here today to kind of show us around this beautiful prairie they have and kind of tell a little bit about what they do here at the Nature Institute. So we are in Godfrey, about a 20 minute car ride from Edwardsville. Yep. So definitely if you guys have not been here, you definitely need to check it out. They have plenty of areas for you guys to kind of roam around and it's beautiful here. A little wet today, but it's still a beautiful place. So I'm gonna have Ramona here kinda take off and she's gonna tell us all about this beautiful place we're at today. Yeah, so just a few things about the Nature Institute itself. Um, we are a nonprofit conservation organization. We have about 450 acres here. Of course, part of it prairie, some of it forest, and some of it along some streams and some wetland areas. So like Danielle said, lots and lots of things to explore while you're out here. Our trails are open Tuesday through Sunday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, and while you're out here, of course, just remember to social distance and be kind to the, to yep. the land. Yep. But let's go check out the prairie. So we're going to walk into our prairie a little bit. We'll pick out some plants. I'll probably let Danielle smell a couple of them. <laughs> That's the um, and you'll just have to come out and find them yourself. So let's go. Excellent. How long has this been here? Oh, this one has been here for at least 20 years. That sign said dedicated 1998 yes. as a nature preserve. Yeah, and I know this prairie uh, kind of recreation has been here for like 25 years. So it's Fantastic. a, a it's fairly well-established yeah. prairie here. It's very big. You don't really get to, you can't really tell how big it is from the road, but now stepping in because this is my first time here. Yeah, so this is trail that we're back. on here it's within a five acre parcel okay but the whole thing is about 40 acres wow and it's lined on all sides by some forested areas and of course we have some of the urban um, housing developments on the opposite side of the prairie here um, but as you can see everything's fairly short so this time of year we have a few of the the shortest flowers that will start coming up we're not seeing a whole lot right now. This spring has just been super, super weird. Mm -hmm. Everything's really confused. <laughs> um, I have seen a couple golden Alexanders in some different yep. places that I've been, but there's just not a whole lot going on in yeah. the prairie right yeah. now. But as you can tell from some of the, the tall brown stuff, the grasses and the plants in this prairie do get very, very tall. So I'm five feet tall. All of these grasses, they're a good two feet taller than me at the height of the summer. So just kind of imagine that as we're walking through here. Um, we get goldenrod in here, we get compass plants in here, we get all sorts of sunflower looking flowers in here. So it really is just, it's a delight for the eyes when you're here at the height of a prairie season. And I bet for the birds and the butterflies and the insect and all the other critters. Yeah, absolutely. If, if we didn't have some of the, the truck and traffic noise, yeah. you could probably hear more of the birds. <laughs> We can hear some. Yeah, yeah we have some some. song sparrows, all sorts of Maybe fun as things. We walk in here. Deeper. Right. Yeah. Some of our favorite things to find while we're out here walking the prairie are some of the scat piles. We yeah. get coyote scat piles all over the place. Um, and the kids. You you know you know you're an environmental food. geek when you get excited about poop, right? <laughs> right? Is that I do, I isn't do, that yeah. like the mark of a right? It really is. It really right. Is. Ooh, look, so spider webs. Oh, these are cool. These are cool. These are awesome to see. I yeah. love these. I love so these. So these are most likely some sort of wolf spider, some funnel web spider. Look how intricate um, that is. Yeah. Well, well, we probably amazing. wouldn't even notice it if we didn't have the dew on today. Right, exactly. Yeah, you really see all of them. Out there. And just look at the, like, the work. The, the work. <laughs> the work that went into that. It just... It and never it ceases to amaze. To step on it and just right, of course. We could just walk right away. by it. Yeah. Um, quite quite a work. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm trying to 
identify some of these plants before they get very big. And we do have some monarda, some bergamot. Another name for it is bee balm. And this is a type of mint. So it's a smelly one. Let's use our plant like right this. here. Yep. You can see kind of the purple yep. edges on the, the leaves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mints tend to have a square stem, and mm -hmm. that is true of this monarda. And if you smell it, it's not as nice of a minty smell as like you know, your spearmint, your peppermint yeah, that you right. think of. But it is still very, very minty. So you can just kind of tear up the leaves, kind of right. squish it in your fingers a little bit. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do oh, in a yeah. prairie is That's smell nice. things. Yeah. Smell things and feel things. Yeah, I get that too. Um, the other fun thing about prairies are, are the textures of the plants that we have here. So right behind Danielle, we have, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's a much thicker leaf. So if you feel that one compared oh, yeah. to the Monarda leaf, it's much thicker, right? It's very, a little kind of soft too. Yeah. So these thick leaves help the plants hold on to the water as things get really, really dry mm -hmm. here in Which the prairie. Which is kind of crazy. Like you could see how much water's on, like the droplets and everything compared to those. Yeah. Yeah. As we walk in here, we get things like Rattlesnake Master, um, and then a lot of our Silphium plants, they have very, very thick uh, sandpapery leaves, and that keeps them from being eaten by herbivores, as well as helping them to hold on to that water. It's so nice out here. I, I, I myself, I have to admit, I, I haven't been out here to this location yeah, um, but it's just a hop skip and a jump yeah. from Edwardsville and it's and I also understand that you have a pretty impressive team of volunteers that are out here that help maintain the prairie and, and help make sure that you know invasives are managed right yeah so our stewardship director Eric he uh, he runs a um, he runs a volunteer program for the day every month and a lot of times that is going into the forest, cutting down honeysuckle, but sometimes that's being out here in the prairie. It might be seed collecting, mm -hmm. cutting out some of the woody, um, aggressive yep. species. Um, it really just depends on what he needs done, and, and our volunteers come in and they do some of that. But here's one of those really, really thick yep. leaves. Oh, yeah. Adaptations. Yes. Oh. And this one I do believe is a rattlesnake master. Mm -hmm. Looks like it. And it is one of my favorite. Yeah, such a such a, such a cool plant. It is. Such a cool prairie plant. Yeah. Um, so this prairie, if you look around, you probably kind of see the evidence of it was actually burned uh, this past spring. Mm -hmm. So that's yep. why we don't have huge, huge bundles of dried grasses. You can see some of it, of course, laid yep. down. Um, but fire is one of those really important processes mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. a prairie. It keeps out some of the, the woody species. Um, it helps all of the, the prairie species just get the nutrients that they need to come up in the spring. Um, and then as that dark black layer is on the ground, it helps the soil warm up early mm -hmm. in the spring so that things can pop up even just a little bit sooner. Right. Um, so we think of fire as a really, really bad thing, but for prairies and even for our forests in a lot right. of instances, it's, Absolutely. it's a really important process. And yep. that was one of your quiz questions. Yes, it was one of the quiz questions. We start we start each week with a quiz um, and we were talking about fire a bit. So I, I bet it's, uh, you know, man managing, um, doing, doing managed burns and prescribed burns in an urban environment like you are like you said a few moments ago that you're surrounded by neighborhoods here so what is that what does that look like yeah so within our burn plan we have to have um, kind of certain restrictions on ourselves so the way that the wind is blowing kind of determines whether we can burn or not on a particular day so mm -hmm. we do we have subdivisions on yep. you know one side of us so we try to make sure that the smoke is going to go straight up or at least go into the forest rather right. than into those houses um, we also have to be ready for some of those phone calls. We always yeah. let the you know, fire right. department know, the police sure. department know, because uh -huh. they inevitably sure. get probably 10, 15 calls. The prairie's on fire, the prairie's <laughs> on fire. They get to answer, right. yeah, we yep. know, it's yep. okay. Yep. Um, which is always kind of fun. Have you ever witnessed a prairie burn? I, I have. I, I have not. It, Unfortunately, I was out of town the weekend because the watershed just did one in mm -hmm. February, and I was out of town, but I heard it. 
a, yeah. a amazing thing to see. Yeah. The, the watershed partners with Lewis and Clark and their ecology program. And, and so that's a great, that's a double benefit, right? Where you can uh, not only from an ecological standpoint, um, get some things done to the land that will regenerate and, and make it more healthy, but you're also, it's a great learning, in the yeah. field learning experience yeah, for those ecology kids. Absolutely, so this uh, prairie was one of my first prairie burns that I had ever witnessed, and, and the flames were like 20 feet high. Yeah, I was yeah. taking pictures left yeah. and right. It was so cool, but yeah. just the, the sound of that prairie right. yeah. was also really impressive. So for oh, our wow. students watching, that's a cool career. You know, when you think of career connections, you know, the people that manage lands and the people that um, actually are trained to do safe prescribed fires for ecological restoration purposes. That's a very cool career. Yeah, we need more of those. Yeah. Get to use cool equipment and wear cool, cool, yeah. <laughs> cool gear. That's right. Go <laughs> <laughs> walk through and see sure. what you can find. Sure. Up here I do have kind of a wet section, so um, there are some different plants that will grow there versus some of the other places in the prairie. Typically, you can prairies as being very dry, and generally they are, but sometimes you get wet patches. Um, one of my favorite things to find in the prairie, and right now they're really small, so they're hard to find, are the mints. We have hairy mountain mint and slender oh, yes. mountain mint, and just the smell of them. Yes, amazing. some of my favorite plants. I actually like the mix of birdsong and utility trucks, right? It's like... <laughs> yeah! It's our natural everyday life, right? So this, I do believe, is a wild hyacinth. Nice. This is one of our earlier uh, prairie plants that will bloom. And you can see it's fairly small. A lot of the smaller plants tend to be the, the blues mm -hmm. and the whites and the the Sometimes the brighter colors, sometimes the more muted colors, but then in the, the fall we get the yellow. Yeah. The mm -hmm. yellow just really pop. I'm always amazed at the, the color change. Yeah, right. That season. one really just pops out of us. Yeah. One of the plants that I haven't noticed here on our property yet this spring is spider wart. Spiderwort is one of my favorite plants. And sometimes you find it in the forest, sometimes you find it in the prairies, a couple different species that we have here in Illinois. But it's got a bright, bright purple flower with those mm. yellow stamens. And really, really cool leaves. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing you guys could do is you guys come out here and on ask we talked about seek iNaturalist. This would be a great place to just kind of identify all those different plants that you guys have yeah, out here. Absolutely. I was told that we possibly have a turkey that is nesting in our prairie. I don't know if we're going to scare her up or not, but that would be pretty cool <laughs> if we could get her to run in front of us. So if you look off, well actually in front of us, both sides here, you can see that this area is just full of all of the same plants. Could also mean that this is one of those places <laughs> that just didn't burn very well last year. And sometimes you get that. You kind of want a mosaic burn where there are places that it kind of stay intact where animals can find shelter and then places that burn clear. And that really is kind of the best, the best burn for the It's interesting, you know, I think when I think of people walk, looking at landscapes like this from the road, not getting out of their car, which is, you know, a, a very common way that people experience landscapes like this, right. they're not going to give it much thought. In fact, they're probably going to look at it and think of it as an overgrown, unmanaged place. Yeah, and yeah. so it really does challenge, you know, everybody to, to think about 
what our landscapes used to be and um, and also what healthy native um, you know re restored landscapes and prairie plantings like this one can look like throughout all the seasons so like you said we're here in a weird season year you know this has been a very weird year um, and of course the prairie isn't in its peak bloom until the summer but even this there's a lot going on under the ground here and on top it might look like it's weedy yeah. but it's not and I, I think it's important for people to experience places like this and understand this is this is healthy <laughs> this is intentional this is a vibrant habitat that might not look to the to the to most people as alive but it's very much alive right yeah absolutely and as you look in here and you get a little bit closer you can see clumps of the same plant just right. kind of scattered throughout um, and that gives of course those plants the advantage in that area because they're sharing those nutrients with the plants around them um, so a lot of times our prairie plants when we put them in our yard they, they become very aggressive mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's because there's so much competition yeah. here in you know their native uh, areas. So, of course, we at the Nature Institute, and I'm sure at Watershed as well, just advocate for planting native species. And there's some advantages to that. They're not going to need to be watered as much because mm -hmm. they're used to the the area that we're in. They're used to, you know, having wet mm -hmm. times and dry times. Um, they're also going to be a little bit more competitive against some of the weeds because mm -hmm. that's what they do normally. Mm -hmm. And also, there's such a much better food source for our native pollinators. Mm -hmm. Our pollinators have adapted to the plants that are here, and they're able to use those food sources and find them much easier. And so mm -hmm. if, we, if we plant some of these natives in our yard, we're not going to have to do as much work with them, right? and they're going to be a much bigger benefit for everything else around. Right. And they might need some tender love and care for the first couple of years, but then after that, if planted with intent and care, they're pretty self-sustaining. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's definitely absolutely. a lot of great resources out there too. Yep. Get your hands on mm -hmm. those native plants, like especially websites that kind of help you find which one is specifically native, maybe to your right. area yeah. and everything. So yeah, it's definitely something to check out if you need a nice little to do thing. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. Plant sale coming up on Ooh. the 30th out here. So if you go Oh on our good. Website, May May 30th? May 30th. Okay. okay. Um, so get on our website, find those details and that's www.thenatureinstitute.org. We'll have Excellent. We'll share that. Definitely. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely share that. Yeah. Wow, let's see what else we can find. And those native plant sales are probably a nice little income stream that helps go right back into education and restoration efforts out here, yeah, right? Most of that goes right back into the greenhouse so that we can oh, that's great. next year. That's great. That's great. Yeah, comes back to education. That's great. So I guess while we're kind of walking, what are some of the other properties that you have kind of within the nature institute that people can explore? Yeah, so um, we have the Olin Nature Preserve, which is mostly forested. Um, it is kind of a bluff top and then the trails go down into the bottoms along the creek. So when you come out and you're hiking Olin, you definitely want to be prepared for um, a semi-difficult hike. Because uh, <laughs> yes. you will be going up and down Not something as nice and calm as this. <laughs> yeah, no, this is very flat and relaxing. Um, but of course there we have upland forest, we have bottomland forest, and then we have all those riparian areas. Um, some of our favorite things to do, especially in the summer, are to go and explore some of those creeks with yeah, the rocks definitely. and some salamanders, some macro invertebrates. Um, and then we also have our Mississippi Sanctuary, which is a, it's connected, but a little bit separated um, from the, the Olin Nature Preserve. And it's another ridgetop property, and it's because of where it sits and the history of that land management, there's a completely different um, slew of plants that will grow there. So the previous owner uh, planted some pine trees over there, and because he did that, the soil is a bit drier, a bit more yeah. acidic, um, so the plants that grow there are just a little bit different. It's also drier 
here because of where it is yeah. along the block. So, kind of comparing those two sides of the property, you get some some really different features, which makes it really fun to hike. Yeah, it's just a it. lot of stuff, a lot of diversity. Yeah. yeah. I know one thing that was interesting for me the first time I came here is like seeing all the bluffs and everything like that because I'm in Lebanon right now and you don't see much of anything like that. So that first time I came yeah. here and we were kind of on the top, I think over by, I don't know what those old like, we were no. on the skeet tower, yeah. like the skeet range, right? Like, and you just look over and you're like, oh wow, like I was not expecting to see that. So this is a super cool place that's very close to Edwardsville, that just stuff you don't see and even in Edwardsville. Yeah, so the skeet range is one of those places where we actually have a river overlook. You yeah. can look out over the Mississippi River and just see really how high you are up on the bluff. Yeah, it's crazy. But also just how vast the river is. Mm -hmm. Really, really cool. You can hear those songbirds. So pretty. So pretty. So you, you all really need to, to come out here. Over on the far side, that tree with kind of the white tinge to it, that is a black locust tree. Okay. And those white tinges, those are the flowers of the black locust and right now they are so fragrant if it was a dry day we'd be able to smell, smell the black locust right here so. that's and awesome that's one of those plants that will try to colonize yes like yes 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 an early succession plant yes and that's one of the things that eric and his team they have to come through and cut out every so often that's fantastic well, this has been, we thank you so much, Ramona, for taking a little bit of time out here morning. Yeah. It's rainy, but again, it's, it's a, it's so, it's, it's so, so not, peaceful. Like, yeah, honestly, it's not too bad. Exactly. So again, this place is a place that's open to the public. Mm -hmm. um, what are the hours again? We're the trails? Open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Tuesday through Sunday. Excellent. And it's right here in Godfrey, Illinois, just a hop, skip and a jump from St. Louis. Um, and even closer to Edwardsville. Uh, we, as, as, uh, as Watershed Nature Center, we always love shining a light on other people and places that are taking um, care to restore nature and to create habitats uh, and to recreate um, you know, places that, that enable a greater biodiversity to, to thrive. So thank you so much and thank you very yeah, much. Thank you guys. Okay, that, that's it for week yeah, eight, right? I guess that's a wrap. So this is going to be unfortunately the last video so i really hope you guys enjoyed it don't forget all our resources from all these eight weeks are going to be on our website to stay so feel free at any time to go back rewatch the videos check out our challenges we have for you guys we take the quizzes if you want so definitely something to check out so thank you yep. guys for thanks joining thanks so much program. you guys have a great rest of your day and week yeah. thank you and thanks thank you guys Bye. Thank you guys. <laughs>